It's the 50th movie night! Yeah! yeah. The Kermit arms. Yeah. I can't believe shit 50 of these out. <laughs> <laughs> So, one of the earlier ones that we did, and one of my favorite ones that we reviewed, was The Infiltrator. So, it's a good it's thing a that- It's a great follow-up to the thing that came before it. <laughs> the great follow-up to the thing that came before it. So, uh, today we're going to be talking about I-Man, which is very similar to The Infiltrator. Another Scott Bakula failed pitch movie pilot crap. <laughs> but this one is movie length, so at least you get, you get twice yeah. the stuff in this. Um, this is also noteworthy in that it was Scott Bakula's first acting credit. Um, he'd done other things like uh, Broadway and stuff before this, but this is uh, <laughs> not real acting. Yeah. But this he didn't was the get first... into the real stuff till he did Iron Man. Yeah. This is a Disney pilot, much like um, Mr. Boogity or Bride of Boogity. It was for Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color. Mm -hmm. And this was the original I something. Did it way before it was cool, Apple. <laughs> Apple was inspired by <laughs> Iman. They probably watched Iman. Okay, she was called everything I dash. It's pretty much like Quantum Leap, but That's it... stupid. <laughs> like, like the Infiltrator. Yeah. <laughs> if Quantum Leap was the Infiltrator, it'd be <laughs> Iman. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> what the deal was with getting cast in this. Scott Bakula was unknown, and then the first thing that he, his first acting credit is the lead in a Disney movie. Mm -hmm. Granted, it was a shitty pilot, but that's pretty damn good for like a first acting credit, I would think. Yeah, I mean, I guess they saw him on Broadway. They probably knew that he could uh, yeah. do, do some acting. Yeah. He could be the perfect, so give him a the chance. perfect idiot. What is this picture in the back? The villains in a race car. That never happens. Yeah, what? What was this from? It's clearly not from my man. On TV, spies always escape through the air vents. Air vents always lead to the... What do we do now? Every man, Jeff Wilder, played by Scott Bakula, is the perfect idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he is a taxi driver who is exposed to space gas in a space canister on the NASA truck, and that makes him invincible, so he can regenerate and he will never die. He has no discernible skills other than being invincible. Mm -hmm. So this is basically an hour and a half of Scott Bakula suffering grievous injuries, yeah. and it's hilarious. Basically, his one skill is he gets to repeat his failures. Like, he gets to, yeah. He's, he's got like a control Z and undo. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is Darwinism in effect. Like, this is like if the the Final Destination well, it's, curse it's was messing following. with Darwinism. <laughs> yeah, if the Final Destination curse was on them and it was trying to kill them at every turn, him and his son, but they can't die, mm -hmm. so they just keep regenerating and death is like increasingly frustrated like ah oh, can't get the wilders <laughs> the moment he gets this invulnerability he just gets shot going to the corner store hi lenny this movie is so wildly incompetent so hilariously bad i feel like this this just needs like a run through from start to finish the incompetence of this <laughs> So, um, immediately, we, we gotta know that he's an Astros fan. Just so we know that they're in Houston, so he's wearing an Astros shirt, and we gotta be constantly reminded. And his kid Astros. has a bunch of that crap. Yeah, they're Astros fans. Just so you know, this isn't California. They're Astros fans. His son is a Flight of the Navigator. Yeah, <laughs> the kid from Flight of the Navigator plays his son in this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, first of all, they gotta... Which came out the same year, and both had the same success. Yep. So they tried to establish that Scott Bakula's character is like a horn dog, like he's into the ladies, and so he'll yeah. be trying to pick up ladies kind of half-heartedly. Uh, yeah, apparently he's taken a whole bunch of stupid jobs, like, because that's a running thing in this, like, oh, he was also a waiter, he thought it'd be a good way to pick up the ladies. Mm. <laughs> they, they introduced that he's done all these jobs that would require, like, some actual training and schooling to do, but mm -hmm. apparently these are just kind of one-off things that he did and was bad at. I used to be an air traffic controller. I had to quit because I couldn't handle the stress. I can't handle stress. 
I've done a lot of things. I, I was a bank teller, managed a bookstore. I spent half my life looking for a job without stress. The army turned me down. They try to do some jokes in this, like at the beginning where he, he wants to pick up a lady in his cab and he turns the light on, but instead a guy comes in there and he doesn't get to pick up the lady. Oh, I gotta go to the airport! Uh, and then he runs over an angel. Oops. This keeps happening! <laughs> Sam, you keep running over angels! He's a real jack of no trade. <laughs> it's it really is. So he goes to his kid's football game. Yeah, run. Yeah, do yeah, it. Run. Previously established with this totally normal conversation with this other cab driver, NASA has collected some space gas from space. Space canister. Canister mm. spelled wrong. They say it's like alien atmosphere is the other way to describe it once. You're like, what is it? <laughs> they just, I don't know. It's they just show some us magic them gas. getting this via stock footage at the beginning, so yeah. they really front load <laughs> this movie for you. And then they do like the 60s type intro. Drr, I man. <laughs> some Superman vaguely kind of Iron Man font. You're just like, oh yeah, this is the new Superman. Iron oh, Man. World's worst superhero, Iron Man. How are we gonna get these stories together? The space gas and the taxi driver. Well, he's at his kid's football game and the NASA van, the official NASA van, happens to be driving by when it's raining and goes out of control. That guy's out of control. It wasn't really raining, it was just kind of a downcast day. Yeah, it was kind of slick on the road, but it was too much for the NASA van transporting the space canister with the space gas mm -hmm. that could change the world. Yeah, of course you should drive recklessly with that. And I don't know who they're hiring at NASA <laughs> to drive these things, but they should rethink their hiring policies. Who was hired as the official NASA truck driver, by <laughs> the way? <laughs> Uh, it could have been Bacula, it should have been, considering have been how Bacula. good he was. Yeah, they, well, I, <laughs> you might as well have been like, oh, I might meet a hot alien females if I drive the stupid NASA van. Oh! Would have really fit in with his crap character. <laughs> Scott Bakula runs into action because apparently no one else wants to do anything. They're like, well, just, yeah. that guy's got yeah, There's other parents at this children's football game, you know, like coaches and stuff, but nah. They're all just like, whoa, stand back, let that guy die. <laughs> and he pulls the guy out, and as he's dying, the NASA guy, like, he's like, get the canister, get the <laughs> canister. This guy with, all like, right. what you'd assume are fresh wounds, but there's no blood coming from them anymore. You can see, like, they're kind of deep. Cuts Why on should his they face know how to too. do wounds? This is yeah. only a, sh a movie that depends on injuries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Scott Bakula goes to get the space canister, and he's exposed to space gas, and then blows the fuck up. Dad! Dad! And then we get the performance of the movie. <laughs> oh no, Dad! <laughs> to his dad blowing the fuck up. Mm -hmm. It's for all he knows his dad's dead. He should have been dead. Old Scully's dad and White Lodge enthusiast himself <laughs> can't bring him back. <laughs> well, they're trying to revive him, and then he dies, and then he regenerates, and it fixes his face, it also combs his hair for him. <laughs> it's yeah. nice that the space gas does that for him. Yeah, and they make sure to let his kid like look in on the... Yeah. Nothing they really do. They kind of put him in and go, well, I think he's dead. <laughs> Make sure there's a little a little kid window here so that they can watch their father die. Why well, is he allowed to do that? But this hospital is super incompetent because just <laughs> Bacula heals via Eye Man power or whatever. I don't know what makes him Eye Man. Like, no, they never call him that. Because he's the Invincible Man. Oh, Eye Invincible. Man. Yeah. Isn't... You didn't get that little clever, no, clever word I, I never really thought about what I stood for. <laughs> Idiot man. <laughs> <laughs> that would be more appropriate. <laughs> they just let him wander out and they're like, no, wait, come back. And they get their top guy, the best guard in the world, to go get him as Bacula kind of like slinks out with his son. Uh, uh, uh. This guard's like, all right, I'm going to kind of slowly walk towards the door. And they're like, get that man. No, stop that man. Oh, 
I don't see him still standing at the door. He made it out of home base. I guess he's gone. <laughs> well, it's hard to, to tell who is the bigger idiot here. The hospital staff or Scott Bakula. He wakes up and he's like, what happened? What am I doing here? And then he just gets up mm -hmm. and walks away. He doesn't wait for yeah. an answer from them, nor does he ever ask. Yeah. Because, okay, you can tell it's a hospital, so maybe he can assume he has some sort of head injury. Mm -hmm. But he walks away without paying them or without checking out or anything. So apparently he's dying, mm -hmm. ditching, getting injured and ditching. If you want to be generous, <laughs> though, you can say, like, when he wakes up, maybe he's, like, dazed and confused still. And just he doesn't kinda... act like it. He no, just gets like, yeah. Dur, dur, dur. But it, if you want to be generous, <laughs> you can say that, okay, at the first. But then he, like, he goes home and never he... really asks his kid about what happened. No, it's like, does it just, is there ever a point in time where his son's like, hey, Dad, remember when you blew the fuck up? Yeah. You remember when that happened? That was weird. Why are you okay now? The kid never asks. And apparently the hospital never got the information from them, so they were just... They went to the hospital and, and didn't ask the kid about it and just took him in. So they don't know who he is. They're like, I don't know, he escaped, he vanished like a phantom! <laughs> People just slowly walk away from this hospital. They saw this time. miracle. Murph. This guy came back from death. Lazarus himself <laughs> walks casually out. They couldn't catch him. Man walks out of sight. Doctor's dumbfounded. <gasps> He takes a shower, because they gotta get that Bacula fan service in. <laughs> gotta get him shirtless. He's like, oh no, we have no food in the fridge. I'm gonna go to the convenience store. Immediately shot upon entry. Hi, Lenny. The robber's reaction was pretty good, though. The convenience store robber. Yeah, I thought he needed, uh, like, uh, a gimme on that. Like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh. I did not mean to do that. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it! Thought like that would work, I guess, like everyone be like, well, okay, his bad guys, his bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bacula gets up and then lifts his shirt and watch the bullet disappear. Uh-huh, but apparently that wasn't enough to convince him he's invincible. No, later he's like, oh, well, maybe he was using blanks. But you, you watched the bullet wound disappear from your stomach. Yeah, and also, like, you blew the fuck up. No, like, they're gonna be like, hey, remember when you blew up? Like, yeah. I don't know, I recovered from that pretty easy. He was like, oh yeah, I was blown away from the wreckage or something. Like, yeah. that's what would happen. He'd be unscathed. Like, they could probably cut his head off and leave it on a tray and have him, like, regenerate from it. He'd be like, oh, it's probably just a magic trick. <laughs> would there be, like, would he regenerate another Bacula? Would there be two Scott yeah. Baculas? They're not too clear. They do say he would regrow things. Yeah, he regrew his appendix. So, like, would, yeah, will he multiply? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would have happened if it were a series. See, there would be an evil Bacula that grew from him. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the evil man, the yeah. mega eye man. Eye man versus <laughs> die man. <laughs> he gets picked up by the NASA scientists where it's kind of unclear, like, what the hell their department is. Yeah, this gets extra confusing a bit later, but yeah, right now they are supposedly two NASA heads. There's a lady, and there's a dude, and then a doctor. The lady is sort of like a, a special ops kind of person yeah, who they works just, for They NASA. just kind of collect Bacula after he gets shot, too, and just take him into NASA headquarters. Yeah, he, he, he trains in a NASA sweater, mm -hmm. and uh, you get more fan service where he runs. <laughs> And they test him, and apparently that's all the testing they need to be like, ah, he can regenerate. He's he's invincible yeah. now. It's like he can run forever without losing breath, pretty much. Yeah, I guess that means he's the best. There's there's ways they could have tested this. They could have cut his finger and then watched it heal, and that would he'd be like, oh, that was kind of weird. Maybe there is something to this. Mm -hmm. And there's like a moment where he he starts trying to act. I mean, what are you telling me? I'm just gonna uh, keep on. Regenerating? I'm never gonna die. And they're like, turn that acting off. Yeah. We gotta get back to I Man. I don't really know. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> There's like a few moments where he's really sincere in this. Like, mm -hmm. the, the movie's dumb as fuck, but I think it helps how sincere he is because it, it makes it more hilarious than annoying, as opposed to like, you know, the boogity movies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> or infiltrator, yeah, or, yeah. Even then, he was trying to act up parts, but it was a more annoying character. Yeah, but yeah, he is being so obnoxious. He's not really doing any of that in this. At least. He was he was a better character in this than that. Yeah, they don't really complete their tests or anything. They just go, yeah, you're invincible. We we pretty much solved it because you ran on a treadmill for like 20 minutes. So. They're still r running tests later, way later in the movie, and they find out some important things, but they're just like, nah, we'll just like end it here for now. And he's like, well, I'm going to go home. And <laughs> yeah. No one can stop Bacula from just sauntering off home in this movie. <laughs> That's his only special skill in this. Yeah. He can saunter off and never be caught. <laughs> Because, like, I don't think they would let him go, pretty much, if they thought he was infected with alien gas. It's very unlikely. They'd probably put him in quarantine for a bit to make sure. Yeah, that he wasn't going to, like, infect someone or something. Mm -hmm. They ask him to join them, because apparently NASA's very nice and accepting of things. They're like, why don't you join us? Because imagine, a soldier who can never die! He could do anything! Even though, again, he has no special skills. In fact, he has negative skills. He the even points thing... out that he's got no skills yeah. when they're talking like, to him like, about it. He's like, I really it. have nothing going for me, guys. <laughs> I am pretty much the worst. <laughs> like, oh, but because, you can't die now. Because he can still get injured. He can still get knocked out. He can still get cuffed. Yeah. It's, he's not invulnerable, man. <laughs> yeah, he's just, like... All they, have, all they have to do is handcuff him or lock him in a room, and he's done for. It's supposed to be like Invincible Man, because he's not even that. He's not really Invincible. Yeah, because he, yeah, like everything I mean, will destroy this guy. Yeah, he'll, he'll heal. I yeah, guess regenerate As long as he has time. Cool. Yeah, regen <laughs> it takes a little bit of time, too, for him to regenerate. They have like these time lapses where it just takes forever. Mm -hmm. Like when he gets his nose broken, and they, yeah. I guess the villains just wait for him to heal. He broke my nose. He gets so weenie when he gets hurt in this. Yeah, in order for this power to work, he has to be the most incompetent person alive. Incompetent man. Incompetent man. Ah! I guess we should go over what the, what they recruit him for in the end. This this brilliant plot of this movie. Are we gonna go into what happened next? Though? Oh, the, the military and the train? Mm. No. Next part of this story is they're transporting a giant frickin' laser via train. <laughs> NASA has a laser. Why? I don't know. Again, it's yeah. part of that, like, every every compartment uh, NASA thing. The running theme, though, is incompetence, so apparently this laser is, like, oh, leaking some sort of radiation because they well, didn't it, make it correctly. They had liquid helium that was supposed to cool it off and keep it from overheating, and they didn't realize that the helium would basically evaporate like mm -hmm. steam, and once all of it evaporates, it's going to explode and destroy all of California. And they're transporting... Why would they know how helium works? That's so untested. We don't know what helium is. <gasps> the laser gets is transported by a military train. And it's stolen... By Dr. Claw. By Dr. Claw. There is an eccentric millionaire. He does look like the Dr. Claw figure. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Put that beside him. He's the Dr. Claw action figure. <laughs> An eccentric millionaire steals this laser and is holding it hostage from the military. Mm -hmm. And how he did this was there was a secret tunnel next to the train. Magic. That, yeah, the Complete train disappears magic. through this. Like, there's this tunnel is only long enough barely for the entire length of this train. <laughs> like, there's no time to turn this train onto different tracks or anything. This just had to go somehow sideways, which, you know, trains can do. They, they might as well have said Wiley e. Coyote painted it for them and they went through it that yeah, way. Which would have made more sense than <laughs> this. <laughs> And they don't know how to get this laser back from this eccentric millionaire and sweater enthusiast. Yeah, because he lives in a castle with an electric fence. Yeah, so, and they're like, we could no send one. the military in, but he would never surrender, even if they overpowered the lasers. And apparently they have laser guns, too, so he knows yeah. how to, how to make lasers, like, apparently. Yeah, he, he watched Star Trek one day, and he's like, I could make some knockoff phasers. <laughs> Just <laughs> arm him, all my goons with them. He gives them to his goons, who are dressed like they're at, like, a, a 
prep school for expendable guys mm -hmm. <laughs> and with mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of Mr. Oliver Holbrook, welcome. So they recruit the only man that can do this incompetent man who was brought in and shown a video where apparently they took the time to do an effect shot of like this is what would happen if it did explode mm -hmm. yeah they decide stupid bacula no training and they say we don't have time to train you yeah, and he points out i have no training and they're like we don't have time for this just send him in i've had no training i wouldn't know what to do I'm sorry, I wish he had time to train you. And like, why is NASA recruiting him for this? Like, yeah, like, surely there's like some military people that would be involved? This movie seems very confused about what NASA is. <laughs> <laughs> like, what NASA heads might do, but I'm pretty sure Na NASA would have nothing to do with lasers stolen on a train. They're everything. They do everything. Yeah. NASA is everything. The military heard about this, you know, giant laser being stolen by eccentric millionaire guy. They're Go oh, call NASA. That's their department, isn't it? Because it can. No. Be. Yeah, we're not going to get anyone trained on this. Like, fuck California. They can blow the hell up. Who cares? <laughs> Nobody likes California. We're fans of the Astros. We're going <laughs> to stay in Houston where we're safe. <laughs> the Astros will save us. <laughs> so Scott Bakula is scared into going, uh, joining this team, which will just consist of him and love interest. He was mm. not that impressed, apparently, that he was invincible. Hmm, interesting. Jeffrey Wilder has somehow developed the ability to instantaneously regenerate. Sounds interesting. She's the only trained operative that goes with him. Like, yeah. And it, apparently she's a trained operative. She was just the head of NASA earlier. Yeah. You know, like a NASA scientist. I, like, I don't know what she is. It's again, it's very confusing. And she seems kind of lost a lot of the time when they're actually in the field, so I don't know how trained of an operative she actually is. Former school teacher turned operative turned NASA employee. <laughs> what is this? You should have a guy who clearly knows what he's doing here, not stupid bacula just because you can break his nose and it'll reset in a few minutes. All they gotta do is just incinerate him. I think he would be gone. <laughs> <laughs> like just keep him in flames until he cremates. Their only plan with this was, well, we need someone who can die a bunch, but not really, and keep going. <laughs> well, immediately they fail anyway. On behalf of Mr. Oliver Holbrook, welcome. He gets ready to go on this mission, and he they have another acting moment where he's got to say goodbye to his kid, mm -hmm. and then he discovers that the kid is also invincible, because those would have been great stories if mm -hmm. this was if this were a TV show. Just annoying kids' stories. Uh, I'm gonna fight the bullies! Yeah, what he threatened in this movie probably would have happened uh. if it was a series. Like, his invincible powers basically do nothing. No, they don't help with the mission at all. His The only thing that it helps is that it allows him incompetence. Mm -hmm. Much like his dad, he's incompetent, boy. <laughs> well, I, honestly, he was more competent than his dad. Yeah, because but he the stows only away. time he uses his powers is for incompetence. <laughs> he, he stows away in the car and somehow the dad doesn't notice him. Mm -hmm. So he takes the trip on the, on the mission with him and is not noticed until way into the movie. He's got some expert espionage skills. <laughs> yeah, well he ends up like sneaking in and getting into this impenetrable fortress. He also when sneaks under the, the military NASA helicopter to take them there because he stows away in the dad's vehicle and then that. Their big plan to take you know, Mr. Invincible over to Stupid Man's castle is just this helicopter that's at a farm. <laughs> like well, Bluto's farm, I guess. I don't know if it's his <laughs> farm, but they're just a bunch of cows and stuff. Like, why does no one care that this laser's about to blow? up and destroy California. Don't like California. No one cares. This can be the most rinky-dink operation in the universe. We'll recruit a random guy over there who's infected with space gas, which we don't exactly know what it's going to do to him in the long run, but we hope it'll keep him semi-invincible or at least alive enough to get a stupid laser back. <laughs> Apparently the only person with any sort of skills um, that are helpful for the situation is Bluto. 
though, because apparently he's supposed to deactivate this or fix it or add more helium or whatever. He's the only one who knows how to fix this laser. So instead of taking him with them so he could perhaps repair it while they're there, he's going to meet them at some rendezvous point and disappear from the movie forever. Yeah. <laughs> but I love this character. He's so great because he hates Scabacula. I have a wife and eight kids, eight. And when I go into the field, I want to make sure I get back to him. Now, the ghost team tells me you can't get killed, but you can get me killed. The Bluto guy was completely justified in his hate because he's like, you have no skills, you're going to get us killed. Yeah, it's Which very is completely reasonable. Justified, but then they're like, uh, whatever, man. He's I Man. He's yeah. going to get us through this. He had to have been giant, too, because, like, Scott Bagula's, like, dwarf next to him. He had to have been, like, seven feet tall or something. Big guy. He could have made him a burkular sandwich. <laughs> he does look like it. <laughs> and they introduced the running gag of Scott Bakula drinks all the dairy creamer. Because he likes he it likes light. He likes it light. I, uh, <laughs> I like it light. I'm glad that was fit to be a running gag. All of the running gags are beyond stupid in this. There's that and his lucky shirt. You're wearing your lucky shirt. Look what you did to my lucky shirt. Because mm. apparently nowhere in 1986 could he find another denim button-up shirt. They were in scarce supply yeah. at the time. And also in scarce supply of wood paneling. <laughs> no, no, wood paneling. He has a oh, stupid yeah. wood panel station wagon, very yeah. 70s looking. And yeah. Wood panel castle. <laughs> which is another whole can of stupid. <laughs> they go to this island. Um, I guess it was an island he was on? How do they, why do they have to fly in? It was an island, yeah. like in, in The Infiltrator, where it's an eccentric millionaire with an island and traps? Yeah, it's pretty much was the exact same <laughs> movie as The Infiltrator. <laughs> I'm so glad there's two of these. That's so amazing. Dumb Macula character gets a stupid power he didn't mean to and then whines a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You can't have a character who's invincible with no skills without giving him some sort of weakness. So we discover that, um, well, what, what did they discover? I'll give you this one. <laughs> give me this one. I'll give you this one. They find out he will die in the dark. His weakness is the dark. Any sort of light will help him. It could mm -hmm. be uh, just a light bulb, or it could be the sun. Just some sort of light, but if he's mm -hmm. in complete darkness, he'll die. And they send him out on this stupid mission, and then the scientists go, Oh, oh yeah, dark oh, no. could kill him. <laughs> like, they just go, yeah, you're invincible pretty much. You can do whatever. It's really grand. Just uh, put you on this stupid mission. Oops. But I guess we should have finished our tests. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, you're also super infectious and people near you within <laughs> like more than a day will melt. <laughs> Oops. This is over. I think you should have a complete physical. It was perfectly all right before I became indestructible. They had to give him the world's dumbest weakness. Like, it couldn't be, like, some sort of kryptonite or, mm. you know, like, I don't know, it is any anything other than the dark, really. Yeah, and you, you get to see him, like, crying about it a few <laughs> times. Like, they're in an elevator in Wood Panel Castle, where, <laughs> like, it's just slightly dark, and you're like, eh. It's, like, about as good as when he got his legs crushed in Infiltrator. <laughs> he actually does the, so weak. <laughs> <laughs> But I need to point out that it was darker when he got shot at that convenience store earlier in the movie than it was in that stupid elevator. They're not very consistent with no, this. No, maybe it took him a while to realize he was yeah. from the dark. <laughs> Wait a sec. And it's not like they're very, like, it does, apparently doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be, like, solar light or anything. It can just be any light source yeah. that revives him. Like, He's like, like Superman, but if he was powered by light bulbs, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, you know, they could have used this to the story's advantage because there's so many instances of really bad writing on this that they could have fixed mm -hmm. because he thinks that this could be a temporary thing. Like, he's like, what if I just have a virus and then I'm not invincible anymore? So he doesn't want to take any risks. And he, there's no evidence of this, that this is going to fade away. There's no evidence that it won't be temporary either, though. And they're just kind of like, well, well 
You're expendable. Yeah, they're like, that's a risk we're willing to take. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he whines so much about it, despite there being no evidence of this. And they could have had that happen after the thing on the helicopter. He could be like, what if it's wearing off? And that would make sense, because they don't know what the deal is yet. If you think about that uh, helicopter scene, the kid's also in the back there with a blanket around him so they won't find him. So he's extra in the dark. <laughs> he's not whining about it because he's dying from the dark too, but no. Yeah, well, the kid sucked it up. He was better. Than <laughs> yeah. He also loved, he was, he was really impressed by cows and apples. <laughs> never start <laughs> they have to um trek to this wood panel castle yeah, and immediately they're gonna like fall over and die and there's a um there's a rattlesnake uh -huh. and he saves her from the rattlesnake yeah that's also why bluto couldn't be on the mission so that bacula can hit on the girl and be like hey i saved you from the rattlesnake so can you go on a date with me you couldn't owe me one like I <laughs> you thought, want a pity date yeah he immediately <laughs> goes to pity date like he doesn't try to just ask her out normally he's like now that you sure to owe me one can i please get a date <laughs> somehow she's charmed by this yeah. <laughs> she's like yeah i think i'll Data Bluto Burton instead. <laughs> <laughs> the goons are like, yeah. huh? On our radar, we hear someone's being attacked the, the by a snake rattlesnake. The snake told them either <laughs> that or the snake is like a, a trigger system. <laughs> oh, well, someone got bit by that snake again. Let's go check it. <laughs> On behalf of Mr. Oliver Holbrook, welcome. On behalf of our boss, welcome. <laughs> you just see the snake with the radio. So, yeah, I got a couple people coming up the mountain. <laughs> so they're immediately captured because they're idiots, and that's that would be the end of the mission were it not for the kid, who is apparently so much better at this than them. Because he sneaks in unnoticed, gets into this castle where they couldn't. He does the old stick of a piece of wood, like a branch in their electric fence. Maybe, I don't know, because then he touches it after anyway. Yeah, apparently that part wasn't electrified. It was just certain parts. <laughs> yeah, certain Certain parts of these fence are apparently electrified, which are only about as tall as people, so really they wouldn't be super hard to get over. No. Like all you need to do is bring a step ladder and you can jump this thing. It would not be hard to get into this impenetrable fortress. Yeah, they didn't bother like putting barbed wire on the top or anything, so just you get over it and you're in. The raccoons could get in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like the military, no, they can't do anything against this guy. Oh man, he's got a fence. Just bring in a helicopter, overwhelm him. Who cares if he won't surrender? He doesn't surrender by the end anyway. You were planning on him surrendering because of I Man. Hmm. But that kid getting in, that was a real gate gate. <laughs> well, that was their opportunity to introduce us to the wonderful kid theme. Two notes on a harmonica. Holy shit. This is some of the worst scoring I have ever seen in any movie. This was awful. Like it was like the the person who was doing the score was trying to outdo themselves yeah. all the time. When they're climbing the mountain, it's like electric farts or something. <laughs> seen such a give no fuck soundtrack like a song than the one with just two harmonica notes that it was is like, amazing it's like he had five minutes to come up with this and he's like i don't know yeah. <laughs> you know, got clearly it. the majority of the soundtrack is just like i don't know they gave a guy the synthesizer a day to make the whole thing it's like <laughs> yeah just uh, all right uh what do i do for this one Done. It sounds like a temp track. Uh -huh. It doesn't sound like anything that d should be in anything final at all. No, and like, say what you will about Mr. Boogity and like the, the give no fucks of the performances, but the soundtrack sounded like a movie at least. And for something 
Disney release to have that shitty of a soundtrack that's just remarkable. It's like they knew this was a failure from it's the start. This was the wonderful world of we don't care. They use it one time too, not even for the kid. Yeah. Just like um, Bakula and the woman are walking around the hallway and they're like, alright, <laughs> we need a, one more time. <laughs> times that they use this. They're so proud of this track. <laughs> what? That's the worst one you've put in here and you I think use it, had, it that many times. I think it had the most play out of any of the songs. I think so, yeah. <laughs> The eccentric millionaire, I don't remember the name of the actor, um, it's just probably the guy. John Anderson, he's been in a lot of stuff, including a, a Quantum Leap episode, which was really good, but, um, an eccentric millionaire who was apparently he doing plays this... plays gruff, angry, old guy. Because <laughs> he seems like a gruff, angry old guy. Yeah, <laughs> but sometimes he's got a heart of gold, I'm pretty sure he's done that in a few things. In the Quantum Leap one. Yeah. Gruff guy with a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyway, he's the eccentric millionaire who's just doing this just cuz? Cuz it can't be f Wait, no, he wants more money even though apparently he's hugely rich. They say he that they, everything. They, they've agreed to pay him for the laser back at yeah. one point. And even then though he he's, goes, he's still gonna blow up a bridge or yeah, something? Yeah, they're like, why? Is it cuz it's there. Cuz it's there. <laughs> why are you destroying the bridge? Because it's there. Because he's quoting to Alexander the Great or something. Because uh -huh. he's supposed to be this great military strategist. Even though all that he's done is grab a laser from a train mm. and then say, no, I'm not giving it back. That's but, a strategy. But the quote he's like using to, for that, <laughs> it wasn't just, I'm going to go blow up a bridge because it's there. That no. wasn't what Alexander the Great was doing when he said No, that's it's completely out of context. Yeah, if you use it in that way, yeah, it can be really stupid. <laughs> like, oh, well, I've got to go shit in every house in the world. Why? Because they're there. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's truly conquered everything. He has a laser and he's going to blow up a bridge. All right. <laughs> like, you don't set up your villain as this great military strategist and then all he he's just got some goons who eat bonbons and shoot lasers in his in his wooden manner he's a horrible strategist too <laughs> like once he catches the two wonder dummies she her plan like at least she has a plan what's her name again i don't remember what her name was honestly you don't have just say the girl she's the girl <laughs> the girl who Walk cares who cares what the fuck her name is? <laughs> Special guest star John Anderson? Special guest star? <laughs> God. I guess so. <laughs> Alright, well, the, the female NASA um, special ops, whoever she is, person, <laughs> she at least has a plan, so, it, which is a good plan because it involves shooting Scott back. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Claw's like, oh, I don't really need you guys. She goes, oh, yeah, but this guy could have some useful powers. Look at this. And it's like, all right, give her a laser. I have to see where this is going. Why not? And then she shoots. <laughs> and then he, no, no, <laughs> My shirt, my lucky, stupid shirt. <laughs> and then he's whiny the whole time, even though it's the most obvious thing that she did this to get him on their side, knowing oh, to have him interested, not just execute them. Well, even that is not a terribly great plan. If this was just No, she could have set different. it up better, but at least it was a thing. It was a thing, and it was obvious what the plan was afterwards, and he's still mad. But, like, she could have just said, like, oh, I'm on your side, I'll prove it to you, and then shot him and pretended to kill him, and then he could, you know, get up and start, like, infiltrating while because they think he's dead. That would be a way to use his power for the mission. But they don't. They just immediately give away their secret so that... They're they're gonna be fucked. Mm -hmm. Except he's a bigger idiot than them. He gives them breakfast too. And he's <laughs> he like, I'll have like eggs, Benedict Arnold. I'll have eggs too. Eggs Benedict. Arnold. And she has to explain the plan to him. And it's like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but at least he used all the creamer again. Yeah, the another <laughs> one of those. <laughs> At least the window is blown out behind him is the best shot in the movie. 
<laughs> Look at the light. Oh, he's getting uh, super powered. Uh, he's Not really. <laughs> yeah, if they could have been like, that. oh, maybe he gets like super strong with the with the light or something. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. No skills. Oh, what? No skills a shot like that might have worked if they were doing something like that, but no. no. <laughs> in after being scared by a raccoon. Yes. Like a raccoon. He's like, oh, it's too him. cute. <laughs> like, I love that apparently the raccoon would have killed him if, if he wasn't invincible. Death by raccoon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Glass bones. It like, dies from this little fall onto a table. <laughs> the kid can sit around in a room and listen to his great tunes. <laughs> What's his nuts? The the evil villain. He's like, all right. I'm and after she shot them, he's like, well, you guys should be guests, basically. I'll he get thought, you two both a room at thought, my she, suites. He's like, oh, you're a great military strategist because you shot him with a laser. Yeah. Oh, I have some good conversations with you. Anyway, I am going to go and blow up this bridge now, so you stay in here. I'll have a guard, even though the guard apparently just fucks yeah, off. The guard immediately gets distracted by something shiny on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> like, bye! And He's they, like, watch them. No! <laughs> if only they'd written in anything to explain why no, he was gone. Yeah, there he's was just nothing. Gone. And uh, they know that he's invincible at this point, but the they put him in a room. The they could do is lock the damn doors. Yeah, they put him in a room with a window and a balcony that the guy who's invincible could just jump off of and recover yeah. from if he wanted to escape, which he doesn't. No, because why would he use his powers in a useful no, they... way? They have to wait for Dr. Claw's daughter, evil Allison, to come <laughs> in. Oh and my for gosh, her she's to so stink bad. the joint up. Yeah. She's so yeah. bad. Ten billion dollars will be deposited into my Swiss account. Father, you've done it. Daddy, you did it. Uh, <laughs> there's so many bad ADR lines, but yeah, her and the kid, wow. <laughs> so bad. That steel door will slow them down. It was something about the door where he emphasized the wrong part of the mm -hmm. line. Where it's yeah. like, that doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, that'll kick them out. That steel door will slow them down. That's not the right emphasis yeah. on this line. You sound like I barely know what I'm reading, so <laughs> <laughs> just get through it. <laughs> they decide to escape by just tying... Well, they don't even tie her up. They just no. punch her out and put her in a closet and, and they, they walk they away They mention casually. that they don't have anything to tie her up, which is false. She's wearing a robe or they could rip off part of their clothing. Oh, except Bacula's precious stupid bullet hole shirt or laser hole. <laughs> We're here to do a job. That's all. Right. Besides, I never get involved with anyone who shoots me. They establish him as like this ladies man, but apparently when this lady starts hitting on him, he's having none of it. Mm -hmm. Inconsistent. And there's also this part with a female cabbie who's apparently tried to make a date with several times. Yeah, and that goes nowhere. Yeah, and it's just like, well, I gotta go, and then that's the last you see of her. I'm like, what's <laughs> the point of that? Uh, for the series, I guess. Yeah, she could have been annoyed with him constantly. That would have been a good running gag. <laughs> I like it light, get it? Because I need light. <laughs> Remember in 1986 when people had a bunch of shirts that said, I like it light, and there's a picture of him? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, the bad future that could have been. Luckily, Sam leaped in and stopped that from happening. This could have had I'm a gonna good... stop Iron Man from going to series. <laughs> this could have had a good three season run before Quantum Leap. I'm just saying, he yeah, could have. This had could both. have ruined it. No, this could have ruined, ruined Quantum his career. Leap. <laughs> Iron Man went to series, ruined Quantum uh... Leap. Sam, you gotta stop this from happening! <laughs> it's it's almost as bad as Infiltrator! And he he tries to leap at one point in this when he touches <laughs> the fence and they just stupid blue glow around him because that's what electrocution looks like. And it also looks like the shitty early leaping effect. <laughs> they get stuck in an elevator. Mm. And then that, that weakens him. 
And that's when the, the bad guys shoot their lasers up, and it doesn't hurt the floor. It just no. keeps going it's through just, at so them. They would have been okay. Wood panel elevator. Everything is wood panel at Wood Panel Castle. Uh, I love when they're, they're looking for the elevator or the stairs or something to get out of there. He doesn't remember where to go, even though they established that apparently being invincible made him have a photographic memory. Ever since the accident, I have perfect recall. I can remember anything I want. <sighs> You don't remember. You were there too. I thought you had perfect recall. I'm just an amateur. I didn't know I had to remember that. You're the professional. I didn't know I was supposed to remember that. So, like, none of that makes sense. No. That, like, it healed his memory. I don't understand how any of that works. And they, they also try to make it like his multiple jobs would be some sort of skill and yet not at the same time because mm -hmm. normally in a show like this if you're like oh this character's had lots of different jobs so that means like they're good at lots of different things it's just so he can do anecdotes about how he failed at a bunch of things don't tell me you were a hairdresser too uh, for a short time just before i became an air traffic controller i thought it'd be a good way to meet girls but i wasn't very good at it I used to be a hairdresser. Oh, where are you now? <laughs> I want to know the story there. Like, what was his time as a hairdresser like? Probably like, will you date me? No, fired. I just remembered my favorite guard. Well, it's kind of tied between two of them, okay? It's tied between the, the guy with the camp lisp that eats bonbons and watches the monitors. Yeah, this is Norm. You better send someone up here. Something funny is going on with the monitors. And the one who punches a curtain. Wait, someone might be behind there. Best way to check is just to randomly throw your <laughs> fist everywhere. They inform the, the eccentric millionaire about it. He's like, ah, those damn raccoons. <laughs> Always getting in my skylights, ruining my models. So then he takes the truck out and <laughs> to go shoot a bridge, and they escape via a helicopter to go after him. And then it has the best stunt you're saying in this, where it shows the guy hanging off the ladder. Yeah, it was a pretty good stunt for this. You know, they had the guy hanging from the helicopter, and it seems, you know, pretty cinematic, and it was something. Yeah, it's, it was a, something. it's a good stunt, yeah. And that would have been something like, you, you can have a, an idea like this and make it work. Um, and you could have, like, okay, he could be hanging from a helicopter and fall off and be okay, and that would be something exciting. Yeah, yeah they had this perfectly nice photo of him hanging from the helicopter, but on the cover they decided to go with, like, the jogging fan service one. Well, where they're testing him. <laughs> where they're testing him. And then, like, and then him all burnt up. Burnt up <laughs> Freddy, Freddy yeah. Bacula there. <laughs> None of these... Like, the, first, the main thing they're focusing on looks very unimpressive. Like, this is super getting tested guy. It looks like he's Phantom of the Opera or something. Yeah, and this is really misleading if you think that really has anything to do with it. <laughs> no. Hold your fire. They're out of range. Ah, stop! They're out of range! It's like, oh, if only you had better weapons. Like, real, <laughs> normal guns. They're out of <laughs> laser range? Like, they're not very far. They're, like, apparently out of range for these stupid things. <laughs> what? The truck gets away. He ends up chasing it on foot because he can run at full speed continuously and not get tired. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it turns into, like, Steel Collar Man. Yeah. The greatest Great. intro ever, <laughs> which is another amazing unsold pilot, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and so he takes down the guy in the truck because the henchman just didn't lock the doors. Yeah, like he sees him too. Like Bacula jumps on the front of the truck first because apparently he thought he could get in through the front. Why would he go <laughs> for the door first? Jumps onto the front. The guy still has time to lock the door and then he just never does. He even opens the door and shuts it a couple times without locking it. And he gets thrown from there, and then he gets up, and he's like, oh, well, that kind of sucked. He got thrown from a moving vehicle. <laughs> like, we get a way better one, though, with Dr. Claw, because he's just hanging out the window, shooting a laser. <laughs> then they knock him from that. He goes flying into the woods. <laughs> then he just gets back up. He's like, oh, well, that sucked. My part of the movie's done. <laughs> I got knocked out of the movie. He, he's not a young guy, he, and he's not invincible, so why do he recover so quickly yeah. from this? Why are these people not hurt at all from being thrown from moving vehicles? You don't vehicles? need to be invincible in this movie. Scott Bakula gets injured way more than that guy. This teaches you really bad lesson about seatbelts, because apparently this is saying they're not important at all. You can just get thrown from vehicles.
vehicles and get up and like, what? You would think too, if you have a truck where it's got uh, an explosive device that could destroy all of California in the back of it, like within minutes, this is gonna blow up. Mm. And it's leaking dangerously. Maybe you shouldn't have a big truck fight with the, with the vehicle that's yeah. got the explosive on it. And then they just happen to drive by Barry Bluto. He's just he's he just happens to be there. Yeah, like we had no idea. Like, how did he know that this was the spot to be? Like, and you're saying like maybe it's a rendezvous point, but that's some lucky if it was because. This is just the path that, you know, Dr. Claw was taking the laser to go blow up a bridge with. Bacula's like, yeah, yeah, I don't have time to do my one thing I was supposed to in this movie anymore, so... <laughs> this, wait, you gotta drive it over the cliff and then jump out? No, it won't make it without a driver. Yes, it will! You're going straight at this point. You yeah. can bail. You can jump out. Like, the momentum will push this truck forward. You could jump out of it and you would live. It fly hangs in the air forever. He still has time to bail, but apparently he still thinks he needs to drive it down. <laughs> he has like a minute worth of hang time there, yeah. and he's like, no, nah, it won't make it to the water without a driver. <laughs> and he's kind of like, leap out, leap out, leap out. Leap out! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> well, you're uh, fucked here, Sam. Bye! Whoosh! <laughs> no! <laughs> So he ends up crashing this vehicle, and he's been in the water for so long that he, that with no light, that he's presumed dead. So they take him to the hospital and try to revive him with lamps. <laughs> this great dramatic lamp scene where they've got like these you know desk lamps on, yeah. on him in the hospital and they're like no no turn the lamp off he's a goner yeah. call it i don't know how long they waited on this but like they still don't know enough about this guy to know how long it might need or if it could revive him but they're like no nah, we want to save power <laughs> We don't care that much about yeah, him. We don't like this guy. We'll always be proud of him, son. Yeah. <laughs> let, let him watch though. Wait, wait to cover him up till the sun's coming. Yeah. Mm. Look at this. Time of death. <laughs> no, dad. <laughs> yeah. No. But of course he makes it. And he smelled, he had something, he had something, a bad taste in his mouth is what it was. Yeah. Because <laughs> that made sense. Sure. He swallowed too much seawater. Ugh. It's because he read the script, he had a bad taste in his mouth. Uh. Boy, do I have a bad taste in my mouth. So they, they go to get Chinese food with the, uh, with the lady. And, and, the, the, and they let the dog in. Bad yeah, idea. apparently there's a restaurant that lets dogs in, and their dog was missing, but the NASA government guy was like, we have our resources, so I went and got your dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing they can magic up here. We can't, like, do proper tests on you, but we can find your dog. <laughs> And it turns out, in a twist, the dog was also exposed to the space gas. Yeah. Don't it's, think, uh Don't think too much about it. The also, last line, there's another creamer joke. <laughs> Damn it. Did, <laughs> did they do it? Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the last line of the movie is a pretty good summation of this, though. Don't think about it too much. Dad, you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, but let's not think about it. From top to bottom, this movie is incompetent. Everything from the story to the music to just the idea of it is just and, it's and terrible. all the characters within. All the characters within. Everyone's an idiot, an incompetent idiot. But hilariously so, because this movie, like, I adore this movie because it makes me laugh through, like, the whole thing. There's very few dry spots in this. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, it's so good. It's hilarious. And just anytime you get to see Bacula, <laughs> and then you heal his stupid nose, <laughs> and then the woman punches it out again. <laughs> I love that this is a premise that if, if this were made into a series, it would have been a Disney series that, that depends on the main character getting horribly, gorily injured every week. Like, would they have toned that down a little bit? I mean, I realize it's not like gore porn compared to, you know, like a horror movie, but it's still pretty violent for Disney, I think. I don't know. I mean, for like a live action series, what they did in this is probably fine. But, like, I don't know, to have that every week, that'd be pretty horrifying. Yeah, all he has to get most of the time is, like, a shot or something or a stab. I guess that's true. I think they would have toned it down a little bit. Maybe. Um, if it were a series. Because it feels like it they put... It was never going to be a series. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like they put a little bit of money into this. Certainly not to the soundtrack. But there are some things that elevate a little bit compared to, like, Infiltrator, which mm -hmm. was really cheap. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, comparing these two, which which do you think is the better? Infiltrate The better one. Infiltrator <laughs> or Iron Man? Iron Man's funnier. <laughs> Iron Man's funnier? I like the stupidity of Iron Man a little better than Infiltrator. Also, like, it doesn't have stupid, obnoxious, like, quoting other shows, Bacula in it, so... Bacula's certainly better in this. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's so funny just how stupid everyone is in this. It's so bad. Like, they really are. They're all incompetent, and it's amazing how incompetent they are. Why they even get this guy to go on this mission, like... Nothing makes sense. <laughs> Your brain has to go on vacation for any of this plot to work. Um, it's it's a toss-up for me. It's hard to decide which one's better because uh, ostensibly this is a better movie. It's better made. It's better acted. But as far as So Bad It's Good goes, Infiltrator, I think, is, is more pathetic than this one. Mm -hmm. Like, Infiltrator had less money going for it. They had the stupid robot thing. It was more annoying, but, like, there's that quality to it. Like, there, there's like zero redeemable things about that <laughs> versus this where there's some sincerity but that also works in its favor as like a better movie because everything's incompetent but there is that genuineness there and and scott bacula is not acting really annoying so like even though there's dumb things about his character and he's whiny you still feel like he's a likable guy and there's still moments in it where you're like okay they could have done something with this. They they needed to rework the script a lot, but they could have had a series about an invincible Scott Bakula and had something with that. But what if we just combine the two of them and say the I stands for Infiltrator. <laughs> Infiltrator Man! Ah! Someone had to have seen this, and then they were like, ah, but what if he were a robot? <laughs> and then wrote the Infiltrator, because the plot is so similar. Yeah, is. I mean, I realize this was the 80s, and they do have some really bad stock plots from the 80s, but it's so coincidental that there is... A, it's a remarkable coincidence that there is these very similar plots for these mm -hmm. two. Someone was really trying to make this work. <laughs> They're like, come on, Scott Bakula is our hero and with this really dumb idea. We're gonna make this happen. But let's not think about it. So, do you recommend Iron Man for people? If you're in the mood of for, you know, a silly TV Disney movie that's really funny because of how stupid it is, then yeah, you should watch this. This movie's hilarious. Like, it's, uh, I, I can watch this over and over again, and it makes me laugh. And it, it was an expensive DVD because I had to get it from the UK, <laughs> so it's kind of hard to find. But if you can find it, do so, because it was totally worth it. Mm -hmm. So, happy 50th movie nights! <laughs> I wish it to myself. Yeah. Yay! Way to go. Way to go, me. You did it. We did it. <laughs> Watch Iron Man, everyone. <laughs>